Per your request, Helder Silva, the guy who made the original stick drift fix, has made a fix for some of the Razer and Power A Pro controllers. Absolutely terrible mistake. There is not enough material in the nearest asteroid to fix all the power rate controllers that decided to shit themselves. But for whatever reason, he's he's done it anyways, so at only $15, you can counter X drift in your Razer or Power Rate controller. If you know how to solder. So there will be tutorials for both Razer and Power Rate controllers down in the description below. Both are from Helder himself. I don't really have a way of transitioning to the first step of the video. I will be using one of the stock transitions from Premiere Pro. Enjoy. Ooh, that was fucking garbage. I've made a few videos mentioning the stick drift fix PCBs, even the Razer ones at one point in time, but I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown anyways. There are two main forms of stick drift. The first and most common involves these janky ass green potentiometers. They wear out due to, well, really, uh, anything. Wind, dust, fire, Cheeto crumbs, you name it. Once the potentiometer has been worn down by one or all of these things, it no longer sends back consistent and accurate signals, creating some type of stick drift. The second most common form of stick drift comes much later in a controller's life when the spring inside the thumbstick starts to loosen, therefore the recentering position of the thumbstick is not where it should be. This is a form of stick drift that the PCBs are not able to fix. In fact, you can't even fix this unless you completely replace the thumbstick itself or replace the spring inside of the thumbstick. So the way that these PCBs work when countering stick drift is they are meant to be soldered to the bottom of your thumbstick inside your controller. They, like the thumbsticks in your controller, also have potentiometers, the only difference being these ones can be manually adjusted using nothing but a screwdriver. So whenever your dead zone starts developing Parkinson's, you can immediately correct this. Or Alzheimer's or AIDS or cancer or anything like that. In short, this is a very very simple fix for a retarded issue that has no business existing in the first place. It's cheap, quick, and a giant middle finger to the money hungry corporations that keep giving us stick drift. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with all of the Razer and Power Ray controllers. This is a downside that I've discussed before, and it mainly affects Razer controllers because it, it affects the new gen controllers. The Wolverine V2 Chroma, the controller sitting right here, is the most unrepairable device on the fucking planet. You couldn't fit your little needle dick inside one of the nine layers of hell inside this controller. I've taken apart every device here. All the footage that you guys are seeing for these devices is footage I shot specifically for this video. That being said, I will not take apart the V2 Chroma ever again. So here is some old footage of me doing so. Unfortunately, the base Wolverine V2 is also like this, so I don't assume that th the fix would be applicable there either. And to be honest, uh, e even if you could fit them in there, I really don't think anyone would want to. They're incredibly difficult controllers to deconstruct, especially in comparison to the old Wolverines, which the Stick Drift PCB is compatible with. The stick drift fix fits perfectly on the left and right stick for both the Ultimate and the Tournament Edition. It's absolutely flawless, and I've soldered about a dozen pairs of these stick drift fixes to different controllers. It's a very, very, very simple job, unless you are dog shit at soldering, like myself. Anyways, power rate controllers. Bad fucking news. There's some good news too, though. The good news is the stick drift fix works for the power rate enhanced and the Spectre controllers, both from last gen on uh, Xbox One and the Series X. They're... guys. I hate to say this, but they're all the same. When I say the stick drift fix works for the enhanced, I, I don't... I don't really mean this enhanced. The bad news on Power Ray's side is a little disconcerting though, because the only way to apply the stick drift fix to the Spectra or the normal enhanced controller is to desolder the triggers, which is really difficult. Uh, it's not. It's just difficult if you're new to this. I am, and destroyed my Spectra. Quick correction, I am not new to soldering. I am simply bad at it. And some more bad news, this stick drift fix doesn't work for the Power Ray Fusion Pro 1 or 2. This is due to Power Ray's design. It's okay, these controllers were not designed with these PCBs in mind. But, I actually do want to call Power Ray out on their shitty design. Not with the Fusion controllers but with the Spectra and the Enhanced Controllers. This is just a quick side note, but did you ever notice that Power Ray literally uses potentiometers for their fucking triggers? Because I've been doing controller content for two years, three years at this point, and I never took notice. Most triggers in like 95% of controllers use the Hall effect to function. 
but some controllers have analog triggers, like PowerA, and I always assumed, because so many people bitched about PowerA having reliability issues with their triggers, that yeah, it probably had something to do with the fact that they were analog. I just never realized they literally used potentiometers for their triggers. You know, the things that give you stick drift? So that's a little note. So yeah, if you're gonna be buying the Power A stick drift fix, doesn't work for the Fusion controllers, really difficult on the enhanced and the Spectra. The solder job for those two controllers will not just be a couple drops of solder. <sighs> All that for a drop of blood. I do want to give a shout out to Helder for sending out the stick drift fix PCBs that were featured in this video. It's extremely kind of him, I can't thank him enough for him. And I can heavily recommend them to people who know what they're doing, but really only to people who know what they're doing. My job is to fuck around and tinker with controllers and produce videos for you guys. I do this full time, even though it, it, it certainly doesn't look like that. So please believe me when I say, do not try this if it's your first time soldering. So far, even though I've tried quite a bit of soldering in the past year, I have destroyed three controllers. So all of a sudden a $15 fix can easily become a $60 controller plus a $15 fix that's applied to a controller that doesn't work anymore. So above all else, exercise caution and even if you need to, find someone who knows what they're doing to do this for you. You wanna know what you can do though? You can hit the subscribe button, which is no longer red, and that's really fucking getting to my soul. It's irritating me. If you don't change that back, I will quit YouTube. Next project is a versus video. Be there. I love you guys. I hope to see you in the next one. Turn the gray sub button gray again. Wait, no. Turn the gray sub button red again. I love you guys. Peace out.